Alrighty then, I'm, I'm gonna get started. Guys in the back there, okay. So um, I titled this after a blog post I wrote about four months ago um, about trying not to reinvent the wheel at, at OpenShift and I submitted um, the topic sort of as a poke at OpenStack to get them thinking about cross-community collaboration and the effect that it could have on op OpenStack. I didn't expect them to accept the paper. Uh, I thought they would like say, absolutely not. Um, we have to incubate everything. So I'm going to talk a little bit. My name is um, Diane Mueller. I work at Red Hat. I am the OpenShift community manager. Um, I am a, a bad Python programmer. I was in love with Django when Twitter came out, so I conglomerated the two and came up with my hash, uh, what was my name on IRC for a long time. And, that, and I used to be a DJ, and I'm a bit of a snake charmer, which makes me a very good um, community manager. And so what I'm going to try and do today is tell a few stories about what we're doing at OpenShift, um, what I've learned um, at Red Hat over the years, and um, share them with you and see if there's something you can take away um, and talk a little bit about my experience working with the OpenStack community as well, um, and then talk a little bit about the road ahead, um, if that makes sense. So um, at Red Hat, um, there are over 100,000 open source projects that they sponsor or they have resources working on, and a number of them are, are represented in this graphic, and a lot of them are in the booth here um, this week, too. Um, and they all um, have to work together. We have to collaborate <coughs> internally. So we do a lot of internal collaborations, and the project that I work on is OpenShift Origin, which is a platform as a service that runs on infrastructure as a service, which is what OpenStack is. It runs on Amazon, it runs on bare metal, it runs on CloudStack. Um, but we also work in on that platform. We work with lots of other communities that provide um, technologies, frameworks, languages that run within our and on the platform as a service. So there's a lot of communities that we have to talk to, interact with, make sure we have the latest versions of their software, um, and everything um, plays well together. So um, there's a lot of magic in keeping all of that working together. Um, but I'm going to tell you a little bit about my background. Is I started a long time ago. Uh, my first job out of university was working for a small company called Nike in Hillsboro, Oregon. And my job at the time was designing the, the software and using the software that designed the bottoms of your sneakers back in the early 80s. So it was the feeds and speeds and all the math and stuff like that. And every bit of that software, it was the same software that was being used at um, McDonnell Douglas Aircraft to design aircraft parts. So when I went for training, I would train with the same guys that were um, they were designing airplane engines, and I was designing sneaker bottoms. It was slightly a, a different world, but everything about that was proprietary. And then um, a revolution came. How many of you have read The Cathedral and Bazaar? If you haven't, you should. It really changed the way that I looked at and um, the world looked at software. So open source became sort of a revolution. And then another revolution happened with all that software being available. And software started being the thing that was driving organizations and giving us the ability to bring new services and new software into, um, into the world for us. And then cloud came and it changed everything again. And the combination of cloud uh, computing and OpenStack, the open source stuff, has really changed the way um, my world looks. Because now, the same software that I was using 30 years ago to, to do sneaker bottoms and create those molds, I now have um, 3D printers at home can, that I can do the exact same thing on. And a lot of that is based on open source software as well. So, Everything completely changed in the way that I looked at software from where I started in the proprietary world because of two, I say, major shifts, open, open source and cloud computing. The other thing, I, I, mean, I tell a lot of stories. So uh, I, how many of you have heard the story of stone soup? All right. It's an old one. My dad, my dad is German, and, and um, he used to read this book, this exact book, to us when we were kids. It's the story of a soldier that comes to a town, and he has a rucksack on his back, and he has one rock wrapped in paper, and he brings it to the town commons, and he coerces the, the 
the folks there to build a fire and put a kettle of water on. And he says, I can make this magic soup for you. I will put this stone into the water and it will become the most amazing soup in the world. And this, the story goes on and he, a uh, farmer walks by, has a handful of carrots and he talks to them, he says, well, it would be so much better with a few carrots in it. And a few, and the, the, the butcher walks by with a ham bone and, and eventually you get the picture. He, he coerces and works through I'm getting all of these people to add to his project, the soup. And in the end, he has a bowl of wonderful soup and he shares all that soup with everybody. And they, that's the lesson that I grew up with. And that's kind of how I think of community is you, it's a lot about communication. Um, some of it's coercion, but it's all about doing something that benefits everybody in the end. But someone is driving it, someone is moving it forward, and someone has to instigate it and bring something to the table to get it started and kicked off. The other book that I really love, and how many of you have read Mythical Man Month? And so this sort of dates me. I think it came out over 25 years ago. And it really talks about, as projects grow in size and as we're experienced here, I think we're almost up to 5,000 attendees here at OpenStack Summit the number of interfaces between all of those people becomes so much more complex. And the, the key to success to any project is really the communication that we're able to bring and the facilitation of that communication. And OpenStack has done a lot of great work about creating an amazing community that collaborates together very, very well. But adding more people to that project isn't always the way to fix things. So having 5,000 people here is great. And it's a wonderful thing, and it's a great show of market size and the growth of the community. But it doesn't always solve all of our problems. So it, I'm going to tell a few stories about what's going on um, on the project that I work on. Um, and that is, OpenShift has a lot of communities that we have to touch base with. We have an online community of over 2 million application developers who deployed on our publicly hosted um, software. Um, as a uh, platform as a service at OpenShift Online. So we have this community of developers that really we only touch in that they deploy their applications on our platform, on our cloud. And then we have a huge community of contributors. There's a few of them in the room um, here today that are working with us um, to develop that code base. And then we have an, a, a larger installed base of enterprise customers, people like Telstra and Orange and a number of others that um, are really been amazing people. And all of this feedback keeps coming into the project, but it comes from different use cases and different stories. So, one, you know, and we've been a, a, a mild success, I would say. Um, some, there's a couple of surveys out there, and everybody can find a different survey that says wonderful things about themselves. But one came up. We're really, we've really made a good impact on the private pause landscape. So we have had some modicum of success. And the super user survey that came out today said about 11% of you who are using um, application configuration tools are using OpenShift. So we've been moderately successful. Um, we don't brag a whole lot. But for us, it's really never been just about the contributors to the code base. We, I think, when I took this screenshot about a month ago, we had about 190 contributors. And, and a good, I'd say a good majority of them come from um, Red Hat Engineering, and a number of them come from outside. But we've got a steady growth pattern going on um, with people who are contributing code. Um, and we are really been very good in the Octoverse last year. Um, we came in, on, which was a huge surprise to us. We, didn't, we weren't really tracking that, but of the merged pull requests in, on GitHub, we were the fifth in place of people who would take in your code and merge it into our user base. So we, you know, done some really cool stuff. Cisco's done some amazing con contributions, and other companies have too. So, you know, the co we're we're moderately successful in getting contribution to our code base. But it's never just been about that. Our real success has become has been in sharing the knowledge across the different constituencies and the experience and the best practices um, and the ideas about how OpenShift could be used in different contexts and different business models, um, not just by developers, but by hosting providers and operators. So um, when we look at um, community 
we don't mean just the developers who are working on the core code. Um, I kind of think of it as, as a community manager, as I have an Olympic-sized task. I have to uh, go across all of the related open source projects, like this one here, OpenStack, the work we do with, um, in, uh, with Ruby and Rails and V2, with the Go community, with all of the Docker and Kubernetes folks that were working in V3, all of our wide variety of service providers, because in that layer cake, um, we have all kinds of uh, Cloudera and Hortonworks and lots of different people who we have to connect with and bring their services into, uh, into the fold. Um, and we have uh, lots of wonderful partners that we've been doing with. So something that we've done um, very kind of quietly um, on the side is we've been working on creating this concept sort of like Wiki Commons or Flickr Commons, if, if you've used those things, that um, allows us to create a peer-to-peer -peer network um, of people who are using, contributing to the different open source projects that we've been working on. And this has been something that we're pretty proud of, that we've gotten a lot of people to connect. Um, and in some ways, it's about creating those lines of communication, the virtual um, meeting spaces, uh, special interest, interest groups, and mailing lists, where kind of Red Hat can just sort of step out of the way and let the, the participants have those conversations. And we do things like set up briefings for um, Kubernetes people to talk to uh, hosting providers and, and OpenStack people. So we've um, got a pretty extensive list of folks that have been are a mix of customers and open source projects, hosting providers. And so we have some really wonderful conversations in the Commons, and you can find out more about that if you'd like to join or, or learn more at, at the Commons one. So for us, it's really been focused on scaling um, out the connections within the community. So um, in order to make um, OpenShift a successful community, we've had to figure out ways to do that. We've, done, we've taken on something um, a sort of a copy of Fedora Ambassadors Program. We've created something called the OpenShift Accelerators Program, which I'm hoping uh, we have about 40 or 50 members of that. And basically, they're cloning um, myself and other people, anyone who goes out into the world who presents or wants to talk about OpenShift, we give them the tools. Because we, in growing a community of this size, we have to have those kinds of ambassadors going out. We can't be everywhere though I think I feel like I have been the past couple of months traveling pretty frequently. I'd like to be able to say, you know, someone at Cisco can go and give this presentation, or someone at Telstra can do that, or someone else um, is perfectly capable. And so we've been sharing that information, too, and, and growing that community. Because f for us, it's really about making sure that people have all the tools and um, uh, pieces of information so that we can connect, help them connect the dots with each other and then get out of the way. Because community really is about that connection and that collaboration. It's not about being force-fed anything. So th the reason I titled this um, presentation was one of the things that, that has also helped us be a real success, I think, at an open shift and a lesson that we've, we've learned probably the hard way um, is that we uh, need to collaborate with other open source uh, projects. So we need to be able to take software um, code bases functionality that are not our core competencies um, and and bring them um, un into the fold and utilize them successfully. And um, one of the things that brought me into start back in back in Essex in Boston, I started talking um, with OpenStack. And then when Heat came around, one of the things we did was we worked really closely with the Heat folks and created templates. Um, some of the very first heat templates for testing out, deploying, and auto-scaling OpenShift on, on OpenStack. And that gave us a really good understanding of how to make everything work, um, how to spin up Nova um, instances, how to register something with Glance. We learned a lot from that. But they also, in turn, um, the heat team learned a lot from taking a complex application like um, OpenShift, which has got brokers and nodes and has to spin those things up and make sure everything scales. Um, they learned a lot from it, too. So that collaboration was really helpful for us to make sure that we played well with the tooling that the OpenStack community wanted us to use, the, the local orchestration stuff. Um, and we didn't do any reinvention, but we both learned from each other. And so that's sort of where we're at um, 
in terms of uh, the OpenStack community is really making sure that not just within Red Hat, but outside of Red Hat, we start working with other open source communities so we don't create tooling that's unnecessary and we use the tooling. Um, we, we also have, um, if you go to install.openshift.com, we've done a lot of work with the Puppet community. Um, so we, have, we try and use the tools that exist um, in your enterprises and in your development shops today rather than reinventing the wheel. The other th tactic that we use a lot, um, and we've more frequently this year, we've been doing is what I call um, embedding resources. It's like taking someone right off the OpenShift team and putting them in somebody else's open source project. And this works really well. Um, OpenShift V3, if you didn't see the presentation the other day, it's videotaped, but it's a complete rewrite of um, OpenShift in a new language, Go. So we were Ruby and Rails, we rewrote it in Go, um, which is great if you didn't like installing Ruby and creating Ruby gems on your desktop for the CLI to work, that's gone now. Um, but we, dent we ended up using a new language, um, everybody's favorite topic this week, apparently, is, is Docker. We took a lot of um, Red Hat resources um, from the RHEL team and from the OpenShift team and embedded them and put them right into the Docker community to work on things like bringing SE Linux and security um, into Docker and working to make sure that we understood where Docker was going and how it was working so that we could then use Docker containers in V3 successfully. So this trade-off between different groups has really gotten a lot of, um, helped us a lot move to the next generation. Had we not, had we continued down the path of using and baking our own containerization approach, we probably um, would be uh, a very stale product at the moment. The other thing that we've done and um, we're continuing to do is to work very hard um, with, uh, with the Kubernetes community as well. And I think we have, Clayton Coleman from the OpenShift team has now got commit rights and has, is probably one of the most, probably the hardest working person I've ever met, but has done tons of um, commits and into the Kubernetes project and they've been very good about bringing that and allowing us to work with them um, and learn from their um, production scale capabilities to bring that into uh, the OpenShift world. So again, it's like, Google has open sourced an, an, an amazing um, project. Um, they've, they've learned they're sort of opening up the kimono on everything that they know about scaling containers. And we are being able to take that in and move our, our offering to the next level of scaling capabilities. And it's been pretty, a pretty amazing ride and it continues to be. Uh, project Atomic is a Red Hat sponsored project um, that um, we're using pretty heavily as well inside of um, OpenShift, so we're learning about getting that lightweight level of OS available too. So there's, we do a lot of work with them. There's a SIG that we have now that's a special interest group that's with RHEL, Atomic, and OpenShift. Um, if you're interested in that, those three groups are all helping um, each other to, to use that and embed it. We do incubate some things. An incubation is, is, is a tricky subject, and it can be kind of touchy sometimes. Um, we, we have a, a small project called Gear D that is meant to help, if you have a Docker container, help you wire it up so it's, it can be aware uh, and build Docker containers. Um, the trajectory of Gear D is I, I, I'm betting um, that it will be consumed and, and that functionality of it will end up actually being consumed into another project, maybe into Kubernetes. Um, itself at some point. So we, it's not that we're against um, incubating stuff within the open source, because the Gear D stuff is in the OpenShift repo. And there's a few other small OpenShift extras that are in there. So when we need to, we will build new functionality in. And, and, but but our, our ethos is more of trying to figure out how we can do that. Um, not that we're trying to offload the work into other communities, because we'll put the resources in there to make sure um, that it's maintained and supported, but really where it's appropriate. Because this is um, what allows us, I think, to iterate quickly, to, to re-architect and to take advantage of new technologies as they come out. And so the, the platform as a service, can, that offering we have, can move forward architecturally 
rather rapidly because we didn't wire it all up ourselves. Everything's pretty modular. The APIs are pretty um, good so that we can take advantage of other technologies and we don't have to invent all of it here. So there's some trouble with incubation because we really get to, because we do this, um, we do embed some resources, so we do lose some resource time into these other projects, but it allows our core engineers to really focus on the value add for our offering um, and for our project, so we're not distracted by trying to figure out how to do orchestration at huge scale. We take advantage of Google stuff. And if you look a little bit at what OpenStack has done, we've got some amazing projects here, and Red Hat has people probably on every single one of these projects. But um, when it gets pretty scary at times if you start to think about um, all the different pieces and parts of, of OpenStack. And um, I've been you know, playing with it for, since the days of Essex for, for quite a while. Um, and, but it, it, is, it is getting better. Um, it's definitely, I think people are starting to look, and yesterday we had a couple of sessions that were pretty good, um, starting to think about how we can really, t in turn, change the focus to a, a more layered approach, and so that we can make sure that at least the lower, the base computer, the base layer, is interoperable in all the distributions. And that it is that we make sure we get all of the different pieces apart. This is a, a photo from yesterday's two sessions. We, they did two back-to-back -back sessions on growth yesterday in the design summit. Um, and you know, there was a, some debate about the big tent approach, you know, whether we want to have this as OpenStack, this huge big, big tent, and continue to incubate and, and grow new things. And there's a sort of an ethos in, in OpenStack of inclusivity. And I think that's because our culture is, tries to be very inclusive and tries to promote diversity. But in some ways, um, the, some of the scaling issues um, of resources um, and people who have core privileges and, and who are doing reviews on the pieces of that very base layer are, are, are lagging behind. And we're not getting the core pieces or the base layer um, focused on by resources the way that we could because we're distracted by other projects, in my humble opinion. So a, a funny thing happened on the way to the foundation. Um, I, I stole this picture from Randy Bias's presentation at Silicon Valley because at, uh, he did a great presentation about not, maybe not the need for a benevolent dictator for OpenStack, but the need for product management. And I, when we um, get into uh, creating the foundation, if you talk to everybody on the different parts of the foundation and everyone has a perspective on what OpenStack is, and I think one of the things, um, if you could take that base layer and if we could focus our resources on making sure that that base layer was solid and that was interoperable, um, we would have a better time of getting people to adopt it and to getting more um, OpenStack out there in the world. And then the ancillary pieces that we are currently setting up um, maybe have, could have better homes elsewhere. They would be third-party projects, or maybe they'd be in the Apache Foundation as opposed to OpenStack um, Foundation projects. And I think that's one of the things that happens when you um, work on industry-driven foundations or when there's a lot of people who are um, thinking about it from um, that from where their their where their commercial value is going to come from as opposed to something that's market driven and this again I think is um, comes from maybe a lack of product management in um, the oversight of the project and, and it is getting addressed but um, it is a, it's a huge differentiator from other projects so like Linux was much more um, driven by the needs and the use cases and, the st and, and where people really had needs to, to work on things as opposed to trying to add on additional projects. So with OpenShift, uh, with OpenShift, with OpenStack, um, it's already sailed. We've already created the foundation. It is industry dan um, um, driven. That's pretty much the way that we, um, what we have to live with. And I think we're doing a pretty good job of responding to that um, and working together hopefully to get some more product management it's there. But w it, what it does, um, in my, my opinion, I'm talking on, on, on my opinion and, and not Red Hat, so I'm going to take, is that 
by having an industry-driven point of view, we really risk of creating a new cathedral. So instead of something or a lot of new cathedrals, uh, maybe that that create a lot of risk for us in terms of having a project that people can easily deploy and, um, and scale out and use in lots of different instances. And this has been a conversation that's been pretty, um, been running through a lot of the threads in, um, in, the, in this conference and prior conferences too, is that how do we make sure that um, we don't lose our focus on that base project? So there, you know, in my, experience, and I've been around for almost 30 years, is there's sort of two ways that foundations really work is, and it's, and they're basically, and both of them, service is a key piece of it. Like I, I've been working with Python for many years and, it, um, and it's in service to a te uh, the, the technology that Python is and they really do an amazing job with um, making language distributions and, and vetting new modules and things. And then there's the infrastructure, providing infrastructure as a service basically for projects that Apache does. And we sort of have to decide, I think, from an OpenStack uh, perspective, which we are in or how we're going to blend those two and make sure that works for us. Um, and it is, uh, you know, all about service and it, there might be a place in the Apache Foundation for some of the things that we're trying to, inc we think we need to incubate within OpenStack. Uh, another thing, um, a lot of the times, most of the other foundations, if you look at the history of Mozilla and Linux, is that um, the foundations came along after the projects had some maturity. There was, people wanted to make sure a stable, um, well-maintained code base happened and continued to, to be available. So um, I think historically, when choosing for to, to do a foundation or something, you really have to be um, cognizant of what the status of your project is at that point in time. So, um, so I'm sort of getting ahead of myself and talking probably too fast, but um, there's a couple of the lessons that we've learned really is to very carefully incubate um, and learn to, to say no to new projects. Don't try and create new tooling when there's good tooling out there already. Um, talk to your user base, what they want. We have, um, in our case, we use Puppet. We have Ansible installers. We've, got, we've been working with the Heat community, and we're making sure that we're using the tooling and we're not reinventing tooling that um, other people have done a better job and have more resources to work on. And collaborate and embed wherever possible so that it's easier to make, and make sure that your software layer that you're creating can work with other projects. Its key is to maintain the culture of your project, so the, the inclusivity of um, being able to include other partners and users and folks in your project is pretty key. Being able to make sure that you have really strong communication pathways. Um, and this is not just the one-way pathway from Red Hat out to the users and the users back into Red Hat. This is um, one of the major reasons we created this Commons initiative was so that we could make sure that our user base could talk amongst themselves and talk to each other. And that was, that's been really a key um, factor, I think, in the success is that we don't um, try and stand in the way and we make sure that everybody has a... Uh, I think OpenStack has done a really good job of growing the leadership and, and communicating the vision of the culture and that, but I think that there's some work to be done to focus um, what is OpenStack and to be clarify that. And really the key, I think, is to really start to be able to figure out how to connect the dots between all of the different communities. So we see in the marketplace, we see all the vendors that come um, here and promote um, their distribution or their um, additional things, but what we're, we need to do is get more of the users talking to each other um, and build um, maybe an OpenStack Commons so that we can get that peer-to-peer -peer com com conversation going and get the operators and the users talking more to each other and building those communities out there and those pathways. And that really is, um, I think, one of the keys to success is to really try not to incubate too many projects to make sure the communication between not just all of the core developers, but through all of the community um, members and that they all have um, access to each other. And that's one of the success factors that I've seen. So I, this is my stone. This is the soup that I'm trying to, to feed you all. Um, I, I'm not sh 
didn't ex I don't expect everyone to agree with everything I've said here today, but um, this is some of what we've learned at OpenShift and ha that has allowed us to really easily, rapidly iterate into the next generation of code. And when we see it, the, the weight of having some of these extra projects and baggage that the OpenStack community has to um, bring along with it, um, we are hoping that we can share some of these lessons and start to get some more cross-community collaboration going within the OpenStack world. And that's, that's what I had for today. So I'll take any questions anyone might have, but thank you. Thank you for coming. Yeah, so I think what, what we've tried to do is set up, we have the contributor code base. We have, um, uh, in, our, in our community, we have a, commu uh, we have a pretty big um, community of, com uh, I think about 190 folks that are contributing to the project, and that's very driven a lot by Red Hat product management and myself as a community manager, making sure all of those folks. But what we've done is, in, in order to sort of separate those conversations, not keep them separate from each other, but to encourage other communications is to create this thing called commons that allows the users to talk to each other and give feedback. And we have like Trello boards and things like that. But we've tried to create um, the virtual, with mailing lists for, for different groups, different SIGs and things like that. Give them the, cop the capability of communicating directly with each other as opposed to being the, the, the bottleneck. Okay. Does that, that make sense? Yeah, and I, and I would I would like to see that sort of um, initiative brought to OpenStack as well because I think we are we do a very good job of having the design summit and we have a, a separate world with marketplace and these sessions here, but I think the to have like a use all users come together as opposed to a committee of users or, or a foundation of, of commercial vendors to really be able to have end users and operators talking to each other in on a regular basis. And, and give them the facilities for that. Because OpenStack's done great stuff in terms of uh, advancing op how open source projects are run. I think there's an opportunity here to, to take, get OpenStack to advance the way the users communicate and connect as well, to take this model on and move it forward. All righty then. I'll see you all hopefully at the Red Hat party tonight, seven o'clock, La Faust. All right. Thanks.